Okay, so here's the problem. We have f of x given by piecing these three functions together, and the question is, if you read this, is finding all points of discontinuity of f of x and classify the discontinuity as removable, jump, or infinite. So the first thing is, we have here two quadratic polynomials, x squared plus 8x plus 15, x squared minus 4. So right away, before we even look at discontinuities, let's factor everything. So the first piece of our function is x plus 5 divided by, and you can factor this quadratic as x plus 5 times x plus 3. That's the first function. This is a single polynomial, so there's no division. We don't have to factor. And here again we have a division, so let's factor the quadratic on top. x squared minus 4 is simply x minus 2 times x plus 2 over x minus 2. So that is the third piece of our function. So the first question is, which points are possible points of discontinuity? Remember that discontinuity is a fancy word for saying that there is a break in the function. So which, which points do we have to check? Well, what we have here is the piecing of three functions together. So even though the functions may be perfectly well defined, at the points at which we're piecing them, they may not be equal. Right? We are piecing on the left of negative 3 this function, but on the right of negative 3 this one. So both of these may not be equal at negative 3. So we have to check negative 3. Again, we are not sure if negative 3 is a point of discontinuity, but it is a possible discontinuity. So we have to verify. x equals 2 also is a possible point of discontinuity. On the left of 2, we are using this function. On the right, we're using this function. So we're gluing two functions at 2. Well, again, they may not be equal. So we have to also check the second gluing point, which is x equals 2. What else do we have to check? Well, functions could have problems of their own. So let's see what could go wrong here with the first piece of the function. We have a ratio of two polynomials. So you can always compute x plus 5, so there's no problem there. And you can always compute x squared plus 8x plus 15. But there is a possible problem here. Since we have a division, we cannot divide by 0. So here, when x is negative 5, we have a division by 0. So that's, again, a possible discontinuity. We have to check x equals negative 5. x equals negative 3 will make x plus 3 equal to 0. So negative 3 is a point that we have to check, but it's already in our list, so that's okay. The second piece of our function is 1 minus x squared. That's a polynomial. For any given value of x, you can always compute 1 minus x squared. So there's no possible discontinuity arising from this function. Finally, the third function, which factors as x minus 2 times x plus 2 over x minus 2. Again, both the top and bottom are always fine, but since we have a division, we have to be wary of dividing by 0, which happens when x is 2. So we have to check whether or not 2 is a point of discontinuity. But 2 is already in our list. And that's it. We have an exhaustive list here of possible points of discontinuity. So these are the possible x values. So now, well, let's check each one. So let's start with x equals negative 3. And that's really the easy part, because you always look at the value of the function at the point of interest, and then the limit of the function at that very same point. So we ask, what's the value of f when x is negative 3? Well, let's look at our function. If x is greater than or equal to negative 3, f of x is 1 minus x squared. So we'll have here 1 minus the value of x, which is negative 3, squared. So we have 1 minus 9, and that's negative 8. So the value of the function exists at x equals negative 3, and the value is simply negative 8. Now we look at the limit. 
If you notice though, if we are on the left of negative 3, we use this piece of the function. If we are on the right of negative 3, we use this piece of the function. So here, we have to look at the limit from the left and the limit from the right. So let's write that down. So limit, as x approaches 3 from the left, and limit, as x approaches 3, negative 3, sorry, negative 3 from the right. Well, let's see. If x approaches negative 3 from the left, x is a little smaller than negative 3, and so we use this function. But of course, don't use this one. Use the factored form of the expression. So what we have here is x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 over x plus 3. So let's go ahead. Let's find this limit. We can cancel the x plus 5, and so we are left with x approaching negative 3 from the left, a single 1 over x plus 3. So, what's our case? Well, 1 is always 1 over, as x approaches negative 3, x plus 3 approaches 0. So we have a 1 over 0 case. So the only question here is, will this be a positive quantity or a negative quantity? Well, let's see. x approaches negative 3, but from the left, so x is slightly smaller than negative 3. Add 3 on both sides, and you get that x plus 3 is less than negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. So x plus 3 is negative. So we have a 1 over negative 0 case, which gives us negative infinity. So right away here, we could avoid this limit because as we approach negative 3 from the left, the function blows up to negative infinity. So we already know we have here an infinite discontinuity. But let's check this limit regardless. When x approaches negative 3 now from the right, the function is 1 minus x squared. So we have here 1 minus x squared. As x approaches negative 3, we get negative 3 squared, which is 9, so it's 1 minus 9, and we get negative 8. So we have the value of the function exists, it is negative 8. The limit from the right of negative 3 is negative 8. The only problem is the limit from the left of negative 3 is negative infinity. So we have here that x equals negative 3 is an infinite discontinuity. So one down, two more to go. Let's now check x equals 2. So let's move up, and let's see. So at x equals 2, we are looking at the value of f at 2. Well, let's go up. When x is less than or equal to 2, the function is 1 minus x squared. So we have 1 minus 2 squared, 1 minus 4, and that's negative 3. So the function exists at 2, and the value is simply negative 3. As before, we look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 2. But if we go back up, once again we have to look at the limit from the left and from the right. You see from the left, when x is less than 2, the function is this one. But from the right, when x is bigger than 2, the function is this one. So once again here, we have no choice. We have to look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the right-hand side, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Well, let's go back up. From the right, when x is bigger than 2, the function is equal to that. But again, we use the factored expression so all we have is, from the right, x minus 2 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. From the 
left, when x approaches 2 from the left, x is smaller than 2, so the function is 1 minus x squared. Now we have our two functions, let's find the limit in each case. So we're letting first here x approach 2 from the right. As x approaches 2, x is close to 2, but not exactly 2, so x minus 2 is not 0. We can cancel. And we're left with x plus 2. And as x approaches 2, this approaches 4. The second limit, well, as x approaches 2, x squared approaches 4, so 1 minus 4 and we get negative 3. So, what's happening here? Well, the value of the function exists at x equals 2, and the y value is negative 3. The limit from the right exists and equals 4. The limit from the left exists and equals negative 3. Hmm. So, visualize what you have here. We are approaching x equals 2, Now the value at x equals 2 is exactly negative 3. So say it's here. So negative 3. As we approach 2 from the right, so when x is a little bigger than 2, y is really, really close to 4. So the y value is around 4 on the right. But now on the left, when x is less than 2, the y value is really, really close to 3. So when x is a little smaller than 2, the y value is really, really close to negative 3. So you see that as we go from the left-hand side of 2 to the right-hand side, there is a jump in the function. So our conclusion is x equals 2 is a jump discontinuity. And so 2 down x equals 2 is a jump discontinuity. What about negative 5? Well, that's our third and final point to check. So what do we have? Well, we're checking x equals, sorry, x equals negative 5. As before, we'll look at first the value of f at negative 5. If we go back, when x is less than negative 3, this is our function. Well, if x is negative 5, x is less than 3. So this is the function we have. So if we plug in negative 5, we get 0 on top over 0 on the bottom. So you see, f of negative 5 is 0 over 0, and that is not defined. So the value of the function at negative 5 does not exist. Now we look at the limit of the function as x approaches negative 5. And if you look here, we do not have to look at the limit from the right and from the left. Because when x is negative 5, we're way to the left of negative 3, so we always use this function. So we do not have to look at the limit from the left and from the right here. And the function, remember, on the left of negative 3, therefore, around negative 5, is x plus 5 over x plus 5 times x plus 3. Well, we know we have a 0 over 0 case, right? As x approaches negative 5, x plus 5 approaches 0 on top and on the bottom. But this is quite easy, as we have already factored. We can cancel the x plus 5 on top and on the bottom, and we're left with a very simple limit. As x approaches negative 5, what happens to 1 over x plus 3? Well, x plus 3 approaches negative 2, and so we're left with 1 over negative 2, which is simply negative 1 half. So, again, visualize the situation here. Around the point negative 5, there is no y value. The function doesn't exist 
at x equals negative 5. But when x is very, very close to negative 5, the y value is very, very close to negative 1 half. Suppose this is negative 1 half. So there is no y value at negative 5. The function, as we saw before, is undefined at negative 5. But as x is very, very close to negative 5 from the left and from the right, y is really, really close to negative 1 half from the left and from the right. So what do we have here? Well, the function is nice everywhere. There is no jump. There is no infinite discontinuity, but there is here a hole in our function. So what do we have? Well, this is the hint that x equals negative 5 is a removable discontinuity. And again, why do we use the term removable? Simply put, we can remove the discontinuity. We can fix the problem. So here, remember, f of negative 5 was not defined. But you say, well, how could we fix the problem? We can fill in the hole here. And if we fill in this hole, then the function becomes continuous at that point. So we can fix the problem if we now define, if we let f of negative 5 to be equal to negative 1 half. And if we do so, the function becomes continuous. And that's why we use the word removable. We can remove the discontinuity by defining at the point a proper y value for the x value. So if we go back, that takes care of the very last x value. So we had, if you want to summarize it, an infinite discontinuity at negative 3, a jump discontinuity at 2, and a removable discontinuity at negative 5.